You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, hosted by Joey and Holly Baird. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is on the air, and it's heard on WNLV 860 AM and W293CX 106.5 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. WWDB 860 AM in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. WAAM 1600 AM and 92.7 FM, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And KMET 1490 AM, Banning, California. Coming up on the program today, we're going to go over seven interesting items that cannot be recycled, as well as cooking with tomatoes. We're going to give you ideals of how and uh, what to use them in. And herbalist, medical herbalist, that is, Tammy Hikins, will be with us. Plus, your garden questions. It all starts right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you've taken a little time out of your day to join us on the program. Whether you're listening to us in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, Banning, California, or across the country, or around the world, via the simple radio app, the TuneIn app, or via the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, underneath that radio tab at the top of the page, podcast replay or in-studio video replay. Thank you very much for tuning in. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly Baird. You can find all of our content content at that website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, where you, you'll have unlimited access to over 1,400 garden videos, short and long format, in garden and in radio studio. The, uh, pres- uh, the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root-to-soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand-welded and made in the USA, we offer lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at PowerPlanter.com. And now they have DeWalt drills on their site, so you can feel free to go there to get your DeWalt drills that fits perfectly with your power plant. You can go there and figure out what auger you want, and then they will have a drill that corresponds with that size auger to take the guesswork out of your purchase. Uh, you can get a hold of us in a variety of different ways, and they all revolve around the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard communication hotlines. Ivy, three, Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields prune and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. You can also send us an email through the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Email inbox the address is twvgshow at gmail.com. You can also send us a text on the IV Organic 31 Plant Guard Instant Access Text Hotline. Send your questions to Texas at 414-368-9311. And again, the number is 414-368-9311. We're going to talk about recycling and some things in which you are probably surprised by cannot be recycled. Now, uh, Recycling has been pushed very hard in the last two decades and uh, for a variety of positive reasons. Now, growing up on the farm, we recycled minimal things. We recycled scrap metal for cash, and we recycled aluminum cans for cash. And the rest, if it could go in the trash barrel or the burn pile, and uh, it would do such, and it would disappear. The old saying, a lot of things can disappear with just a small match. Uh, so we would burn a lot. I've of st- never heard that saying before. Oh, okay. Uh, Apparently but, that must not be a city. And then whenever the trash barrel got full, we'd take the ashes and that would go to the junk. But, you know, when you're in a rural area, the proximity to a recycling facility uh, for some plastic or paper is not necessarily a priority uh, and to do such, and you can burn it very easily and, and a lot of times uh, it's makes stuff disappear quite quickly. But we're going to go over seven things here that you will be surprised cannot be recycled or can be recycled more difficultly because of the... No, pers- you just do not. You, you do just not don't... Re- no. Okay. These are the things you do not okay. recycle. So the first one is... Or you ta- can't. No, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. Basically, if you do it, you're a jerk because you're causing issues with, um, with, with the... The recycling, recycling facility. facility yeah. Okay. Okay, so takeout food containers. So whether it's like a pizza box, Chinese takeout, um, your your uh, container from whatever, what have you, 
um, doggy the, bag, doggy bag, yeah. essentially, is um, that those are not recyclable. They don't want those grease or food particles, and those could also contaminate other materials that need to be recycled. And, and that's the thing we see. Pizza is uh, one of the most purchased products, I guess, in the fast food industry, and uh, people try to recycle those boxes, and we just cannot do such because that grease jams up everything, and it's infused in the cardboard, and it, that's one of those things that can go in the trash barrel uh, right. on the farm, you know, that yeah, type of thing. trash barrel. Yeah. What? You should just put that directly in the trash. So plastic grocery bags, you always try to recycle plastic mm-hmm. grocery bags, and I tell you not to. Well, you can take them to the actual grocery store. Yeah, you can take them to the grocery store. And put them in that recycling mm-hmm. bin, usually in the in the walk-in path, yeah, uh, walk-in door. You don't put those in your bin, like in your recycle bin or whatever. In the trash barrel that the recycling truck yeah. comes. Okay. Uh, and, and that's because the recycling facility cannot... Uh, recycle that item, it gets clogged up in their machine work, and um, and then it pre- pre- prevents the item in which was being recycled. If there's too much of that plastic in that block that they're recycling, the person in which they're bu- uh, is buying it will reject it, and then the whole thing's just got to go in the trash. Right. So that's why you don't want to put those in your bin. You want to take them. A lot of stores have them. If you're not sure, uh, the stores have the recycling things for the plastic bags. Styrofoam is another one that people think can be recycled and has the little recycling thing triangle on it. Uh, but it cannot be recycled. Right. So this includes, like, packing peanuts. So some of those packing peanuts are actually biodegradable. Right. They're, They're made, made from, from corn. corn. Right. And you mm-hmm. put them in water or you put them in the sink and they'll dissolve with the water, which many uh, packing facilities are going to that form rather than styrofoam peanuts that do not disintegrate whatsoever. However. Yes. Um, not that we encourage, you know, we encourage people to not put a ton of stuff in landfills, but styrofoam is better to put in the landfill versus a paper product because... By weight, it's it's um, it's like less takes up less space essentially. So, don't hate on people if they're using styrofoam versus like uh, cardboard and some something else. So there's that. Certain paper products cannot be recycled. There are certain types of paper products that cannot be recycled either because issues related to um, the way the, the, the lamination on Contam- it. Yeah, lamination. Um, so things like tissues. Like if you use a tissue and you have a cold and you think that you should try to recycle that, that's that's a big no. A, a tissue can biodegrade in a compost pile or essentially anywhere in about. 35 hours. I mean, it breaks down a little bit of water, makes that thing disappear very quickly. If it has a plastic coating on it, so if it's like... Um, certain envelopes. Certain envelopes, certain mailers you get, things like that, you don't want that either. Um, and then the same thing, like you said, laminated stuff. Um, anything along those lines where it's got some sort of coating on it. Uh, certain types of glass cannot be recycled. Now, growing up, we always heard in school glass takes 500 plus years. Nobody knows how long it takes for glass to break down, uh, but and you should always recycle it. But not all glass is a recyclable type of glass. And explain why that is. So it's just the way that it's made, especially things like the what you would call like the Pyrex baking dishes or whatever brand. Um, those are made the heat tempered. The, the heat tempered. Yeah. Those are made where they just, they're not going to be able to be recycled. So if you break one of those, you just put it in the trash. Um, light bulbs and then fluorescent lighting, window glass, same thing, it's been tempered or whatever. Um, and then mirrors, plate glass, anything that's been like treated. Mm-hmm. Um, eyeglasses, you can typically donate those. Right. And then any sort of glass art. So, like, um, if you have a stained glass type thing, that, that cannot be recycled either. Take it to a secondhand store and just give it away or something. Uh, here, an interesting one here is plastic bottle caps. We yeah, recycle I, the bottles, but the caps we can't recycle. I did not know that. And so the t- caps are made with t- a different type of plastic, typically polypropylene, which is plastic number five. That can't be recycled. So if you recycle your soda bottles or whatever, you want to take the tap- caps off. So that's something that many of us probably do not practice, taking the plastic lid off and that little ring that goes around that at the initial opening uh, releases and has that lock net. You know what I'm talking about? the That plastic little ring that mm-hmm. sets down. Both of those need to be removed before recycling a 
model correctly as, uh, from what our research has shown. So that's, that's something that we didn't know. Uh, shredded paper, people think, oh, I've got clean paper, I'll shred it, throw it in the compost pot, or uh, throw it in the recycling bin because I want to shred it to protect me from identity theft or people just being nosy, and you can't do that. So it can clog up machin- machinery as well. So if you do, um, if you want to do something through a shredded paper, we put ours in our garden. Yes. You can line the bottom of containers with it if you want. Uh, we use it as mulch, so there's a lot of different uses for it. It's coming up in the fall here, so what we do with our shredded paper is we've been building it up, and we get a lot of, even though we we don't get a whole lot of mail, we still get a lot of junk mail, and just show notes and everything else. We shred it, and then we put it on the bottom of the, on, we put it on top of the soil, on our grow beds, and then we put leaves on top of that. And by the time spring comes, that paper has vanished, uh, from the microbial life breaking it down and the leaves on top of that as well and it's all going back into the earth so it's something that you can benefit uh, utilizing it in your garden uh, and, and as you said you can put it in the bottom of your containers as well uh, just as a way as uh, not necessarily a filler but as a moisture retention mechanism because water, paper will absorb moisture and then release it and if it's inside of a container it's a little it's kind of like a sponge uh, we found that to be somewhat successful. Not 100%, but it holds a little bit more moisture. It works really well. Uh, anything else we need to uh, be aware of when it comes to uh, recycling? I think that's just it. If you typically you do want to follow if it has a recycling number on it in, in good faith, uh, something like styrofoam obviously isn't that case, and just beware. Most likely, a lot of the problems is the plastic bags, so beware of that. You can still recycle them in a different location, but you just can't put them in your bin. Yeah, and styrofoam to a certain degree is recyclable, but there's only a, a few number of facilities capable of doing such. Most of it just gets, you put it in a recycling bin, they take it to the recycling facility and they take it out of that bin and throw it directly in the trash because they have n- not the capability of um, recycling it at their facility. So uh, just be aware of what we are using, uh, what, we're re- what we can use and can't use uh, when it comes to the recycling. Well, when we come back, it's going to be about tomatoes. We've got a lot of tomatoes coming out of our garden. Uh, Holly and I are going to go over some of the different things in which you can use for cooking tomatoes and some of the um, things that you may not be aware of that you can use. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Do not go anywhere. Four seven three sixty five. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com has all the gardening information you need: videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more. Wisconsin Greenhouse Company has custom-made greenhouses to suit your needs. Grow fruit and vegetables all year long. Strongest greenhouses available that will last a lifetime. Beautiful design available in any size and color. Weather-resistant, energy-efficient to save on that heating cost. Mix and match with glazings to suit your climate. Sturdy and durable. They'll hold up to those heavy snow loads. They'll even add them to homes for agricultural to lodge and to entertaining. It's a great addition to any garden or landscape. Check them out at Wisconsin. GreenhouseCompany.com. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at MIGardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to MIGardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Dharmaceuticals essential oils are high grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit dharmaceuticals.com. Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5 in 1 planting tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Digs perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Helpful for weeding. ProPlugger.com. 
growing herbs in containers. This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe, organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products, from plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. Herbs make great container plants no matter what time of the year it is. Especially in the fall. When it gets cold outside, you can bring your herbs indoors and grow them long into the winter. Herbs such as mint should always be grown in containers as they are very invasive. And you can grow herbs indoors all year long without any problem next to a south-facing window. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. Bobex is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. Bobex deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more, visit bobex.com. B O B B. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear and all black bags protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills 4930 West Loomis Road 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, BobX, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge, natural, and organic garden-friendly products. Based on research and innovation, after 28 years, they are the leader in the organic lawn and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids or composted household waste or synthetic chemicals. Instead, they have manure-free fertilizers, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizers. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family, that is what the founding principles of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit DrEarth.com for more information and where to buy. Tomatoes are one of the most uh, popular plants in which gardeners grow. 90 plus percent of gardeners who put a garden in put tomatoes in. And right now... Uh, tomatoes are coming out of the garden very prolifically and whether you have a hundred plants or you have four plants if done right you should be having tomatoes uh, being harvested I've got a friend she's got four in her front yard garden got more tomatoes than she knows what to do with she's making chili she's making t- uh, spaghetti sauce we've got tomatoes coming out of our garden and there's a variety of different things in which you can do with them now growing up on the farm back to a farm story, uh, for a side dish for lunch, we would just take and slice a tomato, put it on a plate, and then you put salt and pepper on it, and that would be a an item in which you can consume. Uh, some people find that very odd. Other people will eat tomatoes like a peach or an apple and just bite right into it. But here are some items in which we can cook with the tomatoes and non-cooked items that we can utilize the fresh tomatoes that are coming out of our garden. And it's a luxury because if you've ever had a store-bought tomato, you know it's either eat a store-bought tomato or eat a piece of cardboard. About the same consistency and flavor. Right. So this is a recipe I came up with. I call it the tomato 
with butter and pasta. I okay. Guess. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Sure. You can add like you could add a protein like a shrimp or some chicken or something. That's fine. But what I do is I take uh, about a stick of butter. I know that seems like a lot of butter, but eventually you'll some cooks that that, that <laughs> on TV that that would say that's that you need to add two or three yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. But okay. Okay. So then you take um, I don't know probably like three cups of tomatoes, whether they're cherry tomatoes or chopped tomatoes, whatever whatever you got is fine. If they're cherries, do we chop them or do we dice them or what? It's up to you. Okay. This is very low maintenance recipe, right? Work with what you got and how you like it. And how you like it. So then you take that butter, you start getting it nice and hot and melted. You add your tomatoes. You let your tomatoes cook down a little bit. If you want to add mushrooms, you can certainly add mushrooms. Once your tomatoes are cooked down, that's when you would add your mushrooms or your, um, uh, like, shrimp or whatever. Um, And then you take garlic. We, I just usually end up using garlic powder, but if you have fresh garlic, you can do that too. Kind of to your taste. I don't. I just kind of know what tastes good. Um, and then you want to use a little salt as well to to add some flavor. And then you cook your pasta and you mix it all in with your pasta, and it's just a really nice, delicious dish, and it's easy. Uh, one that you do not have to cook is obviously the BLT. Well, you have to cook your bacon. Well, your bacon. Uh, some people do the microwave bacon. Uh, we use the traditional pork bacon. You can use turkey bacon or uh, vegan bacon, either or. Uh, works very well. well BLTs, for- yeah, they're delicious, especially with homemade tomatoes. Um, well, that's really the only way you can do it. I mean, right. let's be real realistic here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like to make, um, like, pico de gallo, like a fresh salsa. Mm-hmm. Those, that is good to make. Um, you can just add fresh tomatoes to any dish. So, like Joey had mentioned, eat it with your sandwich at lunchtime as, like, a side. There's some people that will do, what is it, a tomato mayonnaise sandwich? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. See, I that like was something I never grew up on. I just kind of thought, you got to have something else than just bread, mayonnaise, and a tomato. But That's, that's just, delicious. Okay. I put cheese on mine. Okay. Yeah, but I eat those lot cheese and tomato sandwiches. Or if you have, like, some sort of salami, it gives it, it it's pretty good to get uh, beans, Bean, cheese, pasta, tomato casserole is another <laughs> one. This is something else that I've I've made up, um, and it's like t- pasta, like uh, typically elbow noodles. Okay. And then I use cannellini beans, like a can of cannellini beans, tomatoes, and then some shredded cheese. Um, it's kind of different, but you could play around with that. Um, and then tomatoes on pizza, there's a lot of, like, you'll see, especially on Pinterest, like, use your heirloom tomatoes and put them on a pizza and make this heirloom tomato pizza. Um, same thing, a lot of people will do, like, a calzone type thing with fresh tomatoes, heirloom tomatoes. So there's a few options there. Basically, like, if you have tomato, cheese, and some sort of bread component, you're good to go. Uh, dehydrated tomatoes. Now, we found that if you take tomatoes, uh, cherry as well, you kind of cut them. Uh, and and make them slices, but you dehydrate them and they become sweeter. And then you can also use them for you know on top of pasta, or you can put them in stews, stoops, chilies. You can put a lot of tomatoes, dehydrated tomatoes, in a half gallon mason jar. You want to keep the lid on them because otherwise the moisture in the air will make them. I don't want to say soggy, but they'll lose that crispness, that uh, crunch that they had, and they kind of lose a little of that sweet flavor. But dehydrated tomatoes, if you've never tried that, uh, you can do it in your oven or you can do it in your dehydrator. It's really a neat way to utilize and, and save a lot of tomatoes uh, and, and utilize them in a lot of different dishes. Right. Um, so also there's stuff like bruschetta, panzanella. Those are both tomato dishes with bread. Panzanella is a soaked bread, and it's a tomato salad with a soaked bread. It's kind of um, more on the, the chef end of things. But there's that. And then bruschetta is where you have the toasted bread with the tomato. Um, tomato it's like t- typically tomatoes and oregano on top and if you're looking for like a really good place to get some nice bread and you're in the area you would want to go to like outpost or beans and barley um stuffed tomatoes i've seen a lot of recipes for that coming around especially if you get some of those nice large heirloom yeah Yeah. the heirloom heirloom tomatoes So, so what explain the process of a stuffed tomato are we Gutting the inside of it out and then filling it with a contact mm-hmm. a contact a, mm-hmm. of mixture. And then you typically bake it for a little bit. And then there's any combination of a, like a caprese salad. So with, with tomato, with the fresh mozzarella and the, the basil. Um, so whether that be just the salad itself. Some people do that with like a pesto spread on a sandwich with that nice fresh mozzarella. Um, so that's a good combination. Again, tomato, cheese, carbs, 
There's a lot of combinations. You can juice too. tomatoes. You can juice tomatoes, yep. You can make gazpacho. Gazpacho is a chilled tomato-based vegetable soup. It's very p- popular, especially during the summer or as we move into the fall. It's if, As we still have warm days, it can be a very refreshing lunch. Uh, explain, what was the one that you saw that you I heard you in the other room going, Ugh. what was that one? It was a tomato pie. Okay. I wasn't really sure about that. Um, I'm, if it's, It must be very popular somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's all in how the preparation of it is. Maybe we've never had tomato pie. No. Um, and it, 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 <laughs> some people may not think it's very good, but other people may say, hey, let's try this. Yeah. Uh, it's like a deep dish type pie. So is it more, from what you found, is it more like a pie or at the end of the conclusion of it, is it more like a deep dish pizza without the other toppings except for that, that baked It was tomato. more like a pie. Like okay. you, wanted, you want to highlight the tomato sweeter side versus the more acidic side and you would use the yellowish tomatoes to make this pie and it was supposed to be like sweet. Okay. I don't understand. You were using creme fraiche, which creme fraiche is, is a, it's a kind of like sour cream, but it, it's a little bit more heartier and rich. So I don't know. Well, and then, you know, we've got all different colors of the rainbow when it comes to tomatoes. So if you did want to go and try a specific type of, you know, next year plant a whole bunch of white tomatoes or yellow tomatoes or orange tomatoes, and you could do, if you're going in the canning process, you could do white ketchup or purple ketchup or, you know, that type of thing with the actual tomato that is that color. Because That is if you like if you like homemade ketchup. If you like homemade ketchup mm-hmm. and, and you found that you do like it, excluding one uh, unusual item or ingredient that uh, most recipes require. Right, that was with cloves and anything sort of of those warmer savory spices such as cloves. I think one of them, one of the recipes we had had cinnamon in it. Mm-hmm. Not not so much uh, cardamom. Those kind of spice family. Um, you would I would like to leave out of my homemade ketchup, and we did, and I liked it. It's just it's a little bit different. It's not it's a different texture. If you're if you're used to the uh, corn syrup in traditional store bought ketchup, it is a transition uh, from. Uh, the store box. Not even the corn syrup. It's just the fact that it's just it's a more different. Run, it's, it's not more not watery. Thick. Yeah, yeah, it's not as thick. So you could let your tomato. If you make your own ketchup, you could let it cook down for a while, or you could just eat it as is, and it, it was good. Now, could you cook it down in the slow cooker with the lid cracked just to get to the yeah. consistency, and then okay, you'd have to watch it more. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's just some of the multitude of different things in which you can utilize and cook with tomatoes uh, in your kitchen. Uh, with what you're coming out of the garden and or what you're getting out of the farmer's market. Well, the shelf life, right? the shelf life that we get on... Uh, Tomato ketchup? Uh, like, with, with any canned goods, how long is the shelf life? Well, you on ideally a- want to um, you want to keep... You want to ideally do it for one year. So that's your idea. Now, it won't combust gonna, in one year from now. Yeah, it's not going to immediately expire after one year, but that's what you want to keep in the back of your mind as you're making these items. Like, I want to consume this within about a year. Uh, first in, first out. Well, Holly, the summer is coming to a close, and most of the kids, if not all of them, are back in school, and uh, peop- and the nights are getting longer, and it's easy to forget about your yard, but we do not want to do that, do we? No, we don't, and we don't want to forget about those pesky Japanese beetles. They may be gone, but they're not far. They've laid their eggs in your turf, and so they can start again next year. And you can take a stand against them with uh, phylums, Grub Gone. Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT granule that specifically targets scarab pests and their larvae. Simply apply the granule with a spreader, irrigate it into the soil, and let the naturally occurring bacteria do its job. Not only is Grub Gone easy to use, but it is a non-chemical <coughs> choice that is effectively uh, effectively controlling grubs. And my favorite part about this, it is non-toxic to bees and other pollinators and beneficials. In fact, Grub Gone has no label restrictions for use around flowers, plants, and uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, on getting it on your hands and your knees uh, and removing the dandelions before applying this product. It is Grub Gone from PhylumBioProducts.com, the natural choice. Phylum Bioproducts, P-H-Y-L-L-O-M-B-I-O Products.com. Got a question? Email the show at twvgshow at gmail.com. Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. 
The Power Plant to Earth Auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. Power Plant to Earth Auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root to soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthy and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand welded and made in the USA lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at PowerPlanter. Spending time scrubbing pesky dirt off your hands after gardening? Use Workman's Friend Superior Skin Cream with added barrier protection, creating a protective layer on your skin surface, allowing for easy cleanup, all while moisturizing and healing your skin. Non-greasy, fragrant-free, and fast-absorbing. Apply first, get to work, wipe clean. This friend has you covered for whatever you're getting into. Visit WorkmansFriendBrand.com. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side of the greater Milwaukee area, where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice a health food store with hundreds of products vitamin supplements bath and body items magazines cars books and a knowledgeable staff catering available open daily at 8 a.m. the restaurant serves breakfast lunch and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good healthy homemade food including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties 1901 east north avenue milwaukee 414 and online at beansandbarley.com do you want fresh produce delivered right to your neighborhood? Check out Tree Ripe Citrus Company. Find out where to pick up quality produce at tree-ripe.com. They have beautiful, tasty peaches and juicy, sweet blueberries. If you're tired of the non-taste peaches and the bad blueberries from your local grocer, Tree Ripe has what you need. They come right to a stop in your neighborhood, fresh off the truck, right from the source. To find locations and schedules, visit tree-ripe.com. They're in Iowa. Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, and right here in Wisconsin. Tree-Ripe.com is your go-to place for the freshest produce around. The Handy Safety Knife is a patented high-quality knife that's worn like a ring, so it's always conveniently at hand and very easy and efficient to work with. That's why you'll find the Handy Safety Knife at work in a wide range of industries and applications. Learn more at HandySafetyKnife.com. Use coupon code WVG to get 10% off and free shipping one time use only at HandySafetyKnife.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy, homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Today is the third of four consecutive Saturdays for Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center's Summer Market. We'll be there, and we'll be able there, there to answer your garden questions, give you some garden tips, and it'll be a fun time. We've had uh, listeners come out with bags with their problems in it, like uh, pest problems, and we've identified them. You're welcome to do that. You can find all this at 4930 West Loomis Road, just south of Layton. You can call 414-282-4220, or you can visit bluemills.com for more information. Over 40 vendors of food, crafts, and canned goods. You'll have a good time. Bring the kids and the family. Maybe you don't have to wait for the tomato to be fully ripened to harvest it, and you can avoid having insects and bugs eating it. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. With so many varieties of tomatoes available on the market, you need to understand the type of tomato and how it grows and when it ripens so you know how to best utilize the fruit that you have growing on the vine. Tomatoes ripen from the bottom up. So if you are fighting with problems such as raccoons or tomato hornworm or other insects getting in your tomato patch and eating chunks of your tomatoes, you can harvest them as you see the color change from the bottom up. 
This can be a challenge on some varieties, such as the green zebra, that doesn't change, but gets a little darker in the lightning strike uh, signatures on the side of the fruit. By harvesting it a few days earlier, as you begin to see the color change on the bottom of the fruit, you do lose just the slightest amount of sugar content that would be obtained in the fruit if it was left on the vine for the entire ripening process. But this will ensure you a fruit that will be ready and fully ripe. Just bring it inside, set it in an indirect area of your home for two or three days, and it will fully ripen. Based on the size of the tomato, from fruit to harvest, it typically takes between 20 and 30 days to get a full developed tomato. And you can always harvest your tomatoes early and green to get that great dish of fried green tomatoes. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. With your host, Joey and Holly Baird. Tammy Harden owns Desert Canyon Farm in Colorado. She is an author, educator, farmer, blogger, and more. The farm grows over 800 different varieties of plants. Welcome to the program, Tammy. Good morning. It's so nice to be with you folks. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy farm to join us on the program and and educate Holly, myself, and all of our listeners with some of your garden wisdom and knowledge. Well, we'll see. (laughs) Uh, Tell us more about your farm. You're going... Uh, you you're, uh, you have a uh, 800 different varieties of what types of things do you grow, and did you start out with that size of a guard uh, of a farm, or was it a progressive growth over a number of years? Well, so we've been here now for 23 years in 1996, and no, the farm started out much different. We started out field growing fresh medicinal herbs that we sent to extractors all over the United States and into the UK. And then as things progressed and shifted, we started growing potted plants, all different kinds of herbs, and eventually added heirloom and heritage food plants to that. And now we do 1,800 different varieties of herbs, all different kinds of herbs, lots and lots of different kinds of heritage food plants, including fruit trees, heirloom varieties, as well as we have 64 different varieties of heirloom tomatoes alone and 38 varieties of basils. So we have a mix that's pretty diverse, including wildlife habitat plants and native plants. So the farm has evolved and changed for sure. We also grow perennial field crops of flower seeds, and those go to Germany to Gelito Perennial Seed Company. Very interesting. Yeah. So you are a certified USDA or USDA organic farm. How does the farm get this certification, and what does it mean? So we have been certified organic since day one, and that is different than how it's done now. Um, When we began our certification, it was through the local Department of Agriculture, uh, which is Colorado Department of Agriculture. And a few years back, actually several years back, USDA took over nationally the certification program for organic growers and processors and so forth. So the process now takes a minimum of three years from the time you apply when you actually get your first certification certificate. So every year we have an annual inspection, and in fact we just had our inspection last week. They come, they check everything on the farm. They check our containers, our equipment, all of our crops. They look at the greenhouses and what they're constructed of, pretty much everything. And if you pass your inspection, then you get your new certificate for the 
coming year, and then you do it all over again the next year. And so it, it's kind of like, yeah, a, a, a tedious process to get certified is kind of what it sounds like. It is, but, you know, the fact that USDA now owns the word organic, and you can't really use that word if you are commercially selling um, in any kind of print way or signage way, um, unless you are certified. So it's the only way for people who are going to be your customers to really know that you are indeed organic and and what that means, you know, that means no GMOs. That means no synthetic chemicals of any sort, including fertilizers. It means that your seeds are clean and your soil is healthy and you have a conservation plan in place. The whole gamut. When, it, it, when, it, when you say certified organic and, and no chemicals, you can still use what is called OMRI-listed products, correct, to a certain degree? Or, or what is the, the requirement? OMRI is the Organic Material Review Institute of products indicating, from what I understand, that if it's listed on that, then you as an organic farmer are safe to use that on your, on your crops. Is that correct? That's pretty much correct. However, you still every time you add a new product that you want to use, still have to get it approved through your certifying agent. So, for example, there are some vinegar herbicides, and vinegar is allowed as an herbicide. It's an OMRI-approved ingredient. But the certifying agent says that the fruit that's used to make that vinegar also has to be certified organic or it doesn't count. So... Um, you know, there is that extra step of having your certifying agent sign off on anything that you use, even if it is an OMRI product. But for our home gardeners, if it has an OMRI seal on the label, that is a very good peace of mind indication for them that that item is safe to use for organic gardening. Well, let's talk about pollinators for a moment. You're a pollinator-friendly uh, farm. Uh, why is it important and uh, to be that way? We are friendly to our pollinators. How can a home gardener be mindful of pollinators even in their normal backyard activities, whether they just have a lawn or actual garden? Boy, pollinators are incredibly important. Um, for example, all of our food chain, even animals that eat other animals rely on pollinators in the long run because some of those animals that are their prey eat food plants. So if the pollinators aren't doing their job, there's no seed and there's no ability for the plants to propagate themselves going forward into new generations. So that's very important in and of itself. And pollinators are having a hard time right now because there's a lot of habitat loss. There's a lot of chemical use that is deadly or toxic to pollinators and beneficial insects. For us here on the farm, it means that our seed crops are going to produce seed, and that's our livelihood. For anyone who's farming, whether they're growing tomatoes or apples or whatever, they need those pollinators to be pollinating their crops to increase their harvests. And that's true also for home gardeners. If you're a vegetable gardener, you need to have bumblebees and honeybees and native bees, wasps, pollinating your dill and your tomatoes, your squash, everything in your garden so that you get a good harvest. Um, so even if you don't have a food garden, you still want to have pollinators around. And, and they are very diverse creatures. There's hummingbirds that are pollinators, beetles, there are butterflies, all sorts of bees, wasps and um, even yellow jackets. They all have their pollinating jobs that they do, and that is important. So diversity in your plantings is critical because every one of those pollinators likes a different color or a different style of flower, a different shape of flower. You know, so they all have their specific um, plants that they, they like to visit. 
Okay. Now, we, we have a lot of issues. A lot of people have a lot of issues with growing lavender. We had some issues. We were one in five uh, and one one successful year out of five years. Um, what are some great tips for growing lavender? Well, growing lavender means you have to have a full sun location. That's first and foremost. And you need to have soil that drains well. So if you have soil that's very um, soggy, you're going to have a hard time growing lavender. If you're trying to grow it in a part shade or a shady spot, you're going to have a challenge growing lavender. Also, anything that has that silvery gray foliage doesn't like wood mulch and, and mulches around the base of the plant that are going to come in contact with the foliage. Uh, why that is, I guess, just because those, hold more, those kinds of mulches hold more moisture. So don't use straw, don't use wood mulch around the base or grass clippings around the base of your lavenders. Um, it's better to use a gravel mulch or something of that sort. And if you have a soggy soil, look and see if you can find a better spot in your landscape to plant. And if you can't, then add some um, spacing agents like perlite or some fine little gravel, crushed gravel, into the soil in the spot where you're going to grow lavender so that it drains better. Those are the main things for growing lavender. The other thing I would tell people is don't cut your lavender back every year. You know, there's that tendency to want to clean up the garden and make it nice and tidy and we trim things back and so on. But if you trim back your lavender, one, it's going to possibly shock the plant and it may die. But also, it's going to delay the bloom, and you won't have flowers as early in the season. So better to leave your pastures foliage, leave the flower stalks even if you want. The small birds like finches love the seed in the lavender stalks. Um, But then you can, when the plant gets its new leaves, you just put on a pair of gardening gloves and gently rub the stems, and all of the previous year's dried foliage will just crumble off, and you'll have beautiful lavender. Excellent tips there. A lot of people have um, a lot of fresh herbs to save and to use. Is there the uh, is there an ideal way to get the most out of them? If you're uh, having a lot of basil or or other oregano or other herbs, what's the best way to do that? Well, many people dry their herbs, and that's definitely a good way to store your herbs, and it takes up a small amount of space. But I like to freeze them. Um, it's easy to do. You just rinse them and shake off the excess water, put them into a freezer container, and then you're good to go. Whenever you need them, you just pull out a piece, whatever amount you want, from the freezer container, and while it's still frozen, you chop it or crumble it up into your food, whatever you're cooking, and it will give you the flavor of fresh herbs. It will also preserve all the vitamins and minerals that are in the herbs, which is very important. So that's one of the things that you can do. If you have basil, you can even puree it up, and and there is that technique of pouring your puree into ice cube trays, freezing them, and then popping them out into a freezer container, and then you just pull out however many cubes you want. That works for other types of herbs, too, thymes and sage and really anything. Um, So that's a nice way to preserve it. If you want to get the most benefit from the plant, that's the next best thing to fresh. Now, drying certainly is a good way to do it, too. Um, But make sure that when your plants are fully dry, that you immediately put them into storage in a non-plastic, non-metal container, so a glass jar or paper sack or box. Um, That way the flavor doesn't change, the smell doesn't change, and the properties don't change in the plant if you're using it medicinally. Well, Tammy, we greatly appreciate your time. Can t- tell us about uh, your book, where to find it, and how we can find more about you. Oh, well, you can find out all about us and what we're doing here at the farm at our website and my blog, which is desertcanyonfarm.wordpress.com. That's the best way. We're also on Facebook, but most of the information is on the website. Um, you can find my book online. They're available in book 
stores. Um, so there's three of them, actually. There's Homegrown Herbs, the Wildlife Friendly Vegetable Gardener, and Cattail Moonshine and Milkweed Medicine, which is the newest one. Well, Tammy, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us on the program and sharing some of your wisdom, which you have with Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And do not go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to be talking about your garden questions and our garden answers. We're going to tackle how to get raccoons off your porch, uh, severed pumpkin stem, when corn is ready, and wild grapes plus more. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. If you have a gardening question, now is the time to call in on the IVOrganics.com 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline at 414-444-5250. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third-generation, family-owned company proudly grows nutrient-rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high-quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash patients. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at rootassassinshovel.com. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at norwalkjuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional grade soil test for the home garden. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, email with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Row Maker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back 
to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Hi, the organic frame on plant garden naturally protects plants against damage and sunburn. Insects and rodents protects newly installed plants and trees. Shields prune and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivorganics.com. You can send us an email through the IVU Organics 31 Plant email inbox. The email address is twvgshow at gmail.com. Or you can send us a text on Instant Access IVU Organics 31 Plant Guard Instant Access text hotline, and that would be 414-368-9311. Again, that's 414-368-9311. I had several questions come in this week. One is, I've got grapes in my yard that I did not plant that are producing. Are they edible? I believe there's some variety of wild grapes. Right, so you want to, if you don't know if they're edible, then they're probably not. We had this issue a couple mm-hmm. of years ago in our garden. We had a very large vine that started growing. We and, just, and we figured that they weren't edible or safe. And you did some research mm-hmm. and found out that uh, there is a very defined line between wild and domestic, and you have to have them certified, or well, not certified, but verified uh, whether or not they are consumable by humans, and if not, uh, the can be deadly. Right. Next question is, is my sweet corn, it's my first year growing it. I think it's ready to harvest. It has some sizable ears on it. How do I know? Well, first of all, the hairs on the ear will turn completely brown and almost black as it dies off. That's one indication. Secondly, you can pull back the husk of the plant, uh, of the ear, slightly to see how bulked up the kernels are on that ear. If they are bulked up well and you feel it's sufficient to what you want, then you can harvest it. Uh, if not, you want to slightly pull the husk back, uh, cover the ear, the, the kernels back up, and then wait a few more days in order to uh, get that to uh, properly develop. Uh, let's see here. I recently canned salsa. The recipe was approved a water bath recipe, which I pressure canned instead of water bath canned for the time mentioned in the recipe. I pressure canned pints. I really, uh, I was really, uh, it was really, people was giving me a hard time because I was doing it in the pressure canning way. Is it safe or not safe? Is it, is that true? Can I consume it? I canned the pints at 10 pounds for 25 minutes. It's fine. You're okay. It's, it, you probably overdid it, but that's okay. Um, over processing the it, it, time. And should you, um, should you have, it, 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 you should stick with what the recipe says. If it's water bath, stick with water bath. Don't try to convert it to a pressure can. Right, or find a, or find a recipe that shows both. But it was, it was overdone, but that's okay. It, it it's was not like pickles where it's going to be a mush. Right. Whenever you get it. To yeah. Here, it's September and I just severed a major vein feeding the only two pumpkins I have. And I had a lot of dead, dying leaves on the plant growing a plant in a large container on my deck. I just fertilized it the other day, and it seems to be doing better, but now I'm scared my pumpkins may die. I just stuck the severed vein, or the the cut vein, back into the soil, or the stem, hoping it to develop roots, so the fruit will continue to grow. I have several blossoms on the vine, but wonder if it's even going to turn into baby pumpkins, or mature before frost. I'm guessing I need 60 days. Is that enough time? Can you help me out? Well... Sadly, if you've cut that major vein on the pumpkin that's feeding the root system, the answer is the plant's going to die. Uh, the only thing that could possibly have saved it is if you are in the ground and you cut that or you sever that. There is, uh, all throughout the vine, as it grows across the ground, it will insert roots or develop roots at conjunctions and then that will help feed the plant. But if it's in a container on your porch... It's not going to, it's not like a tomato where it's going to regenerate roots very quickly and then feed the plant. It's going to die and there's not a whole lot in which you can do about it besides just composting it. You can see what happens, but there's not, uh, if, there's, if the root system is what feeding, is feeding that plant on that porch and the end uh, answer is the plant is going to die. 
a terrible problem with raccoons coming on my porch and doing their business. There's no food or scraps there. They just come and take care of themselves and then leave, and I always have a mess to clean up. Is there any advice that you can offer in order to detour them from doing this on the porch? I do not want to trap them or kill them. Any suggestions? All right, so uh, in the easiest thing here... One would be, uh, instead of using like a Bobex product where you would actually spray it on uh, rags or on the side of the house, which you don't want to do, you can take good old-fashioned mothballs. Take and put them on plates. Now, if your porch is like an overhang where it's not going to get water on them, that's even better. But if it's going to rain, then you're going to have to do this after the rain as well. But you want to put up there that smell, that aroma of the mothballs will detour the raccoons from coming. This also works on like possums and uh, other such as raccoons and possums and other ones. Just standard mothballs. That will keep them from getting on your porch and causing a mess. Before we get into what's coming up next week on the program, Holly, remind them about the executive sponsor. The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root-to-soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand-welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Tune in next week on the program. Do not miss it. We're going to go over Community Gardens 101. For next year, if you don't have a spot on your property to grow, we're going to talk about how you can find and what to avoid and what to look for when it comes to community gardens in your area, as well as the proper use of cooking oils. There's a lot of cooking oils out there. We're going to go over what to use, what not to use, and how to go about using them. And soil expert Gabe Brown. Plus your garden questions. That's all next week on the program. Do not miss it and tell your friends to tune in. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can do that in a couple of different ways. One, by going to your favorite podcast providing website and searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. You can also go to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, clicking on the radio tab at the top of the page for full length or the highlight tab on the right hand side for a segments of all past shows. Until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You have been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcast, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.